Imagine a place where high-tech cities meet sprawling countryside. Add a splash of the exotic and some of the finest cuisine on the planet and wrap it all up in a rich culture and you've got one of the most unexpected and unforgettable vacation destinations anywhere on the globe. When you picture Taiwan, this is probably exactly what comes to mind. A lot of shops and a lot of people. But that's only half the story. There's a whole island of culture, cuisine, and countryside waiting to be explored. And helping me do it, professional photographer and local girl, Nana Chen. Nana, are you going to show me the very best that Taiwan has to offer? Yes, I am. Are you ready? I'm ready for it. Best Vacations Taiwan starts right now. Welcome to Taiwan, or as Portuguese sailors originally christened it, Ilha Formosa, the beautiful island. Located in the western Pacific off the coast of mainland China, the island is home to around 23 million people. Taiwan boasts seven national parks, high-end international shopping, world-famous cuisine, and a rich sense of culture. And if you don't think of Taiwan as a traditional vacation destination, over the next half hour, we're going to change that for good. We begin our adventure in Taiwan's bustling capital, Taipei. Taipei is a city that really comes alive at night. And nowhere is that more apparent than at one of the city's local night markets, a foodie's paradise. People come from all around the world to sample the amazing variety and bewildering array of food on offer. I'm going to show you Taiwanese night market culture. Are you ready? Are we going to eat first or are we going to shop first? We're going to do a bit of both. Okay. Am I going to recognize anything that I'm eating at all? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. This is like a maze. You could totally get lost in it. I know. For hours. You know, it doesn't close until 2 in the morning. I say we close it down tonight. There's a wild variety of foods on offer. And even if you're not bold enough to try some of the more exotic dishes, there's something for everyone. I recognize French fries. I'm tempted by the fries, but I came to Taiwan to experience and experiment. I'm ready to find a truly unique delicacy. Come on. Oh, he's just cooking the squid right in front of us. Yes. Do you want one? I know, I want to save up. Let's keep, let's keep going. I want to save up for something that really says, JD, eat me. Yeah. Oh, see, this looks like dessert to me. Actually, a kind of dumpling with uh, mushrooms and uh, pork. One of the great things about being on vacation is that no one can tell me that I cannot have dessert first. Pancakes with custard filling. All right, custard. Custard. You promise. I promise. Not chicken brain. Oh. That's good. You want some? Yes. Thank That's you. That's really good. That's dessert. Mm. You know what I mean? You know what I'm so, now that I got my culinary feet wet at the market, I was ready to jump in the deep end and try something, yeah, let's say, different. Intestine? Intestine. I called it. I know All my right. organs. Okay. We'll have one. Yeah. one. Yeah. Add a little oil, scallions, black pepper, and chili. You are ready to go. Mmm, tastes like chicken. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Tastes After a night full of unexpected experiences at the night market, we headed due south to the heart of Taiwan and an equally unexpected treat Sun Moon Lake. Sun Moon Lake is the largest body of water in Taiwan and a major tourist attraction. Situated high in the hills above the lake is Taiwan's largest outdoor museum. I'll be honest and say that when I think of Aboriginal people, I think of the Australian outback. But Taiwan has preserved the cultural identity and rights of each of its indigenous tribes at the Formosan Aboriginal Cultural Village. This is where Taiwanese history really comes to life, as the descendants of each of the tribes performs dances and rituals throughout the day, 
sharing their unique culture with visitors and keeping the traditions of their ancestors alive. This is not a place to forget your camera. The setting is beautiful and the ceremonial activities are nothing short of extraordinary. And if you play your cards right, you might even find yourself right in the middle of the action. Taiwan boasts a rich, diverse spiritual history. Gazing over the magnificent Sun Moon Lake is Wenwu Temple, a popular destination for tourists and worshippers alike. When I picture Taiwan, I think of cities, you know, big cities and very busy and did not think there would be something this, I, I don't told know. you it was beautiful. Yeah, it yeah. is. You can just stand here all day and take in the view. And there's another gorgeous view right there. So can you, are you going to show me around the, I am. the temple? I am. Let's, Let's go. go. Wenwu Temple's ornate structure is guarded by two large dragons. Religious and spiritual diversity abound in Taiwan, with everything from Confucianism, Buddhism, and Taoism coexisting side by side with other religions, including Christianity. All over the temple grounds, wind chimes represent prayers, wishes, and remembrances left by visitors. The combination of strong spiritual tradition, peaceful environment, and stunning lakeside setting make Wenwu a really unique traveler's experience. It's kind of strange to be looking at like rainforest over there with the low clouds and then a lake that spills right into this amazing temple. Mm. And as an added bonus, like most of the temples throughout the country, admission to Wenwu is completely free. It's the beginning of a new day. And after a good night's sleep, I was ready to stretch my legs sun moon lake style. And a great way to do that is on a bike. Bike rental shops are everywhere. And with over 20 miles of scenic bike paths to explore, you can easily fill a day soaking up the incredible views and lush landscape. So this lake is about 20 miles all yeah. the way around? Yeah. And imagine once a year, mid-autumn festival that's in September, that's when 20,000 people swim across the lake. Can you imagine? Wow. That's like the Sun Moon Triathlon? Yeah, exactly. They like swim across, they ride around. That's good. I'm not in that kind of shape. I could not swim the lake. Oh, come on. You and your grandmother could do it. No, no. My grandmother's 95. She's definitely not <laughs> coming to Sun Moon Lake to swim. No. Okay, you're your grandfather. Yeah, well, he's dead, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I get the picture. Once you've been around the lake, it's time to get out on the lake. Nana and I got an opportunity to not only take in the magnificent scenery, but visit a sacred island in the middle of the lake that you can't actually visit. Legend has it Tao hunters discovered Sun Moon Lake while chasing a white deer through the surrounding mountains. The deer eventually led them to the lake, which they found not only to be beautiful, but full of fish. Now that is a smart deer. Located right in the center of the lake, Sun Moon's Lalu Island is the sacred home to the Tao Aborigines' highest ranking ancestral spirit. So we can see the island, but we can't actually go on it, right? No, it's forbidden because it's one of the most sacred places for the Shao people. It does not look like it's a very big island. I mean, there's a dock there and then it's pretty small. It is. Um, actually, it used to be bigger, but because of the 921 or September 21st earthquake, it devastated the whole area and made it much smaller. So it actually changed the geography at the mid -down. Yes, wow. very much so. And around. do they still have like festivals, rituals? Yeah. They do. They've Audio. got their own calendar and um, they mark their holidays, their festivals, and um, they come here and pay respects. I have my own calendar too. It usually results in me being late ah, yeah, to just about everything say, I do. Right. So yeah. what time is it for you? Uh, to, for me, it's already like five o'clock. We should be drinking by now. All right. Well, maybe we should do that now. In America, you don't get on a boat unless you have at least a 12 pack. I don't drink beer. You don't drink beer? Mm. Even with me? 
No. And I will get you a tea. Thanks. All right. And that is exactly what we did. There is no better way to unwind than with a nice cup of tea. For the Taiwanese, tea is more than a morning pick-me-up. It's a cultural ritual. And I had the great fortune of getting to see the tea making process from the ground up at Sun Moon Lake's Hugo Assam Farm. I've had green tea before. I've never had black tea. Oh, well, we should try some. That's why we're here. Before we could enjoy a cup of the local brew, it was time to roll up our sleeves and get our hands a little dirty, learning firsthand how to process the freshly picked leaves. So you've picked the leaves. Now, what's the next step in making the tea? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Now it's by hand. Okay. By your hand. My hand. Okay. Mm, yeah. But we need to walk in two hours. Two hours? Yeah, just roll. I'm not sure if I'm going to have time. Yeah. You don't mind staying, do you? And I'll just come back for the tea later? Yeah, you roll. I'll go. Okay. Right or left? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Same direction. Right. Oh, Wax the same floor. Same direction. Same direction. Paint the fence. Okay. Oh. Awesome Black Tea was introduced to Taiwan in 1925, and today it is recognized as one of the best black teas in the world. Spread it out. Yeah. Spread it out. Yeah. Roll it around. Roll it. Roll it. I get it. I get it. After a good workout hand pulverizing the local leaves, I was more than ready to sample the prized blend. So you just pour the water right on the leaves? All right. Okay. Just like that? Take it. Take it. So the longer you steep it for, the stronger it is. The stronger it is. So five minutes is the maximum. It's the most strong. And one minute is like... Weak. Wimpy <laughs> tea. Mm -hmm. No more, I like a three minute. You like, you're a three minute tea man. <laughs> All right, I'll be so, three minute tea yeah, man. Yeah, we're gonna try. try. Uh, almost, okay. oh, oh, three minutes. Okay. Yeah. Three minutes, mm. we're in. Okay. Uh, not quite. There's one more twist in this tea leaf, the pour. I had no idea that drinking tea was such an acquired skill. Now I know why tea bags were invented. <laughs> so when you're drinking black tea, mm -hmm. drink it as you would wine. So you're literally aerating it like mm. wine. You're mixing it with the air. <laughs> you're not supposed to gargle it. No, no, you're, not, you're supposed to sort of aerate it. Okay. My advice, if this is your first time at a traditional Taiwanese tea, you might want to wear a bib. One of the many advantages of a compact island nation like Taiwan is that everything you want to see is within easy reach. What's even better is that Taiwan boasts one of the most efficient public transit systems in the entire world. Kaohsiung is Taiwan's second largest city and the national center for manufacturing and shipping. Currently, it's in the middle of a citywide artistic renaissance, a fact that is readily apparent at Kaohsiung's Formosa Boulevard metro station. The station is known for its dome of light. This incredible work of art consists of 4,500 glass panels and tells the story of human life. This is really a beautiful subway station. I don't think I ever said beautiful subway station <laughs> in my life. I know. That's right. And it's pretty new, the station? Yes, it's very new. And now over a million people use it. And Kaohsiung, actually when I was growing up, was this industrial town where nobody really came to hang out, and it's totally different now. So they're redoing it, they're sort of re-beautifying the city. Exactly. Nice. It's working. Kaohsiung sits near the southern tip of La Ilia Formosa, and heading back to Taipei means another chance to enjoy Taiwanese mass transit. This time, we boarded the bullet train, which can take you from one end of the country to the other in a mere 90 minutes. 8.30 to Taipei, that's us. So 300 kilometers an hour, is that right? Yeah, better that hold fast. on. That is fast. Taiwan is a really interesting mix of the old and the new. You can look out the window of the bullet train and see a 200-year-old temple right next to a brand new building that's going up, glass and steel. There's Wi-Fi everywhere. But at the same time, as we, as we go up the country, you go from major city to rural forested rice paddies. So it seems like it's sort of got one foot in the past and one foot in the future. Makes for interesting traveling. 
Beneath Taipei's frenetic modern exterior lays the rich history of Taiwan's past. Nowhere is that more evident than in the many parks, temples, and historic sites that are all over the city, including the magnificent Liberty Square. In this one sprawling park, you'll find the National Concert Hall, the National Theater, and the stunning Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall. 89 steps lead to the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall, representing Chiang's age when he died in 1975. Inside the hall, guards stand watch over the three-story monument. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall, World Championship stare down. This guy up against this guy. They've been going at it for more than an hour and they have guns. Let's see what happens. All kidding aside, I arrived just in time to see the ceremonial change of the guard. The dramatic ceremony takes place every hour and it attracts visitors from all over the country. Man, those guys can march. From the cultural to the horticultural, it's time to grab a quick subway ride to the Taipei International Flora Expo. It's air conditioned in here. This is not like the Paris Metro, no way. The New York Metro, no way. Air it smells good. It smells good and there's no graffiti or anything or trash or anything. No, you can't chew gum, you can't drink, you can't, you know, you can't eat. Yeah, but it makes for a really nice subway ride because you can get on the subway and not be afraid of what you're sitting in. Yeah, or stepping on, so. To be totally honest, I am not the kind of guy that normally turns up at a flower show. But this many stunning, rare, and exotic plants in one place is a sight not to be missed. I don't know anything about flowers. I know that stuff is pretty, but I don't know anything about it. So you gotta don't worry. guide me here. I, I'll help you. Okay. All right, what we have here in this hall is a flower competition, national I got flower that. competition. I figured that out, yeah. All right, so, but all these plants have to be growing in autumn. So okay. it's the theme of autumn. So that's why all the oranges and the yellows and the leaves falling off the trees. So exactly. All autumn. This is the first time the event has been held in Taiwan. It is so popular, organizers expect attendance to reach about 6 million visitors before the show closes in late April. That's a lot of flower lovers. So, after seeing all these beautiful flowers, are you ready to become a gardener? I think I am. I'm gonna, I've got my garden plan now, based okay, on what you showed here. me. Sweet olive, uh, painter's palette, Good. and then the mother-in-law's tongue, the yes, sharp you stuff need that the... you keep people away. Yes. That's, that's my garden from now on. When I heard that the New York Times had named Din Tai Fung one of the top 10 restaurants in the entire world, I had to check it out. Their specialty is small steamed buns, or as we know them, dumplings. Each one is finely prepared with an assortment of fillings, pork, crab meat, vegetables, even truffles. As you can see, making these dumplings is an art form. Every one of them is meticulously rolled out, filled, and then pinched closed with exactly 18 folds. 16, 17, 18. And he twists it all, wow. Trust me, it is harder than it looks. Nana, how'd you do? Oh, look at you. You're a pro, I'm still. Yeah, but it's not sticking together. The meat's coming out. Yeah, I think we should eat. All right. We'll let them cook. Let's go eat. And we'll eat. All right. Shishi. Shishi. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh. That might be the best thing I've had since I've been here. That is so <laughs> good. Total. Yeah. So. Tell me all of these are filled with dumplings because yes. I can eat all of them. No, you have to share it with me. No, I can eat half of them. <laughs> all right. right? <laughs> the next morning, we headed up into the hills around Taipei to take in more of Taiwan's natural beauty. Yangming Shan National Park is home to the Sayokan Recreation Area a dormant volcano that's known for hiking trails, fumaroles, and spectacular views. <laughs> Weather didn't exactly cooperate today. No, but you never know what to expect. As the higher you go, the less you know. <laughs> now, this whole area is volcanic, right? Yes. Which is why we're getting the bubbling up of uh, that's right. sulfur and hot water and boiling springs. And there are lots of places where we really shouldn't go. Um, 
because it can really scorch your feet. You can melt, can melt uh, your shoes, exactly. literally. The weather may have put a damper on the start of our day, but then suddenly, without notice, the sun peeked through the mist, revealing the valley below and the scorching hot fumaroles. Sun is out. Shoot it. Shoot it while we can. You know what's funny is that you can hear underground, you can hear like it's gonna like it's gonna come bubbling up at any second. <laughs> yeah, you can feel the, the heat coming off of it. Wow, whoa. Right? It's hot. Yeah, you can cook on you can literally cook on that. Actually people on the weekends bring eggs and they put it near no. here. Yeah, and they make snacks or potatoes or sweet potatoes. We used to do that on the sidewalk sometimes. In the middle of the summer you'd crack an egg on the sidewalk, but that was a joke. You could easily spend an entire long weekend exploring the hiking trails of Yangmin Shan National Park. But my Taiwan adventure is winding down and I need to do a little souvenir shopping. For that, we head to the ceramics capital of Taiwan. The town of Inga is just a short train ride outside of central Taipei. If you're looking for souvenirs to take home, this place should be high on your list of attractions. Everywhere you look, you'll find exceptional works of art at surprisingly affordable prices. From one-of-a-kind pieces to items for everyday use, the quality is superb. Totally simple, totally beautiful. Being a hands-on kind of guy and feeling a little inspired, today instead of buying, I am going to make my own souvenir. I'm gonna get a lesson today, right? Yes. Can we get hands on? Yeah, let's right. go. Either Roll way. up your sleeves. I, I already did. <laughs> I am best teapot maker all of Los Angeles. Okay. And I am the best in Taipei. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> there are hundreds of stores that line the areas around Old Pottery Street, and among them, dozens of studios that also provide classes. Uh oh. Hang on. Houston, we have a problem. If you feel like getting your hands dirty, this is a great way to have a little fun, even if your results are less than stellar. That's careful. That is priceless artwork. Mm -hmm. The teachers are polite, talented, and very patient. After several failed attempts, my teapot was finally complete. Uh, no, not that one. Yes, that one. Not just a teapot, a self-portrait. I think I win. 200 years of ceramics is certainly impressive, but for a real taste of history, it's time to visit the one and only National Palace Museum. With a permanent collection of nearly 700,000 pieces, Taiwan's National Palace Museum serves as the National Museum of the Republic of China, preserving artifacts from around 8,000 years of history. From the Neolithic age to the late Qing Dynasty, the permanent collection is one of the largest in the world. I was literally in awe of some of the pieces, but if you ask the locals, the most precious piece in the entire museum is this, the jadeite cabbage. You know what goes great with cabbage? A nice piece of pork. Hey, look at that. That's a piece of stone carved to look like a piece of pork. That's right. And yeah. it's in the museum. Yes, it's one of the key attractions. That is, you really have to love pork to carve that much stone into pork. That's great. I think so. I mean, it looks like it's got this caramelized uh, sauce on top. Yeah, even. I'm very, oh. now you're making me hungry. <laughs> Lucky for us, located next door to the National Palace Museum is the Silk Palace Restaurant. And this is part of the whole, this whole complex we're in? Yeah, it's perfect. Museum first, eat. Eat, museum. After you. Thank you. Silk Palace is renowned for serving five-star meals in a five-star setting. I was tempted to order one of everything off the menu. Two of their most popular dishes are interpretations of the jadeite cabbage and stone-carved pork that are on display at the museum. Each of these delicious dishes are the head chef's works of art. They're not actually works of art, of course, but farm-fresh variants that you can really sink your teeth into. After lunch, we headed back to the center of Taipei to check out an iconic landmark. Towering over downtown Taipei is a building that simply cannot be ignored. This is Taipei 101, a modern miracle of engineering and ingenuity that climbs 101 stories into the sky. 
Until recently, it was the tallest building in the world, designed to withstand major typhoons and earthquakes. This vertical metropolis stands 1,670 feet. And aside from business use, the tower provides visitors with upscale shopping and name brands you'd expect to find on Rodeo Drive. Taipei 101 was the first building to break the half kilometer height mark. Inside, everything is first class and state of the art. From the one of a kind high speed elevator that reaches 60 kilometers per hour, to the world's largest tuned mass damper. Weighing in at 660 metric tons, this technological marvel helps stabilize the building by reducing wind movement by up to 40%. So even though we're up here on the 89th floor, you barely feel the wind moving the building at all. As you might imagine from the top, the view is breathtaking. Just don't look down. For me, the best way to come back down to earth after such a lofty experience is to pamper myself at one of Asia's premier hot spring spas, Villa 32. The northern town of Beito is renowned for its hot springs, and Villa 32 is among the most luxurious and exclusive places to take a soak or enjoy a massage. As I wrap up my stay in Taiwan, it's hard to believe all the amazing experiences I've had in just one week. From its rich culture to its natural beauty and diverse cuisine, there is more to see, eat, and enjoy than I ever expected. But above all, I'll remember the hospitality and kindness of the people that I met here, especially my guide, Nana Chen. We're going to leave you with this magnificent view of the hot springs, but remember, we're only showing you a handful of the experiences that are waiting for you in Taiwan. So make sure that you travel here and experience this great country for yourself. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.